P4. What sort of chemistry does P4 do? Well, we talked briefly about the oxidation. What happens when you oxidise P4? Well, you start off with a tetrahedral molecule and at relatively low concentrations of oxygen, what happens is that oxygen inserts into those phosphorus-phosphorus bonds. And if you in count the number of phosphorus-phosphorus bonds in your tetrahedral molecule, there are six phosphorus-phosphorus bonds in a P4 <laughs> tetrahedron and an oxygen atom inserts into each of these bonds. So the first species that you get is P4O6. And if you work out the oxidation state, that is phosphorus in oxidation state 3. If you put an excess of oxygen present, if you don't starve the system for oxygen, then what you get is P4O10. And P4O10 is the product when these lone pairs, which are going to be on the outside of this molecule here, are also oxidised. So you have six inserting between the phosphorus-phosphorus bonds, and then you oxidise up the remaining lone pairs, and you get a P4O10 molecule. That goes by the not incredibly helpful name of phosphorus pentoxide. So you can buy phosphorus pentoxide, but what you have to remember is that phosphorus pentoxide should be called diphosphorus pentoxide because it has the formula of P2O5. It's not PO5. If it was PO5, the oxidation state would be plus 10 and that would be highly unlikely or frankly impossible. So phosphorus pentoxide is, has the empirical formula of P2O5. The actual molecule is P4O10. We talked quite a bit so far about the fact that these non-metal oxides are the anhydrides of acids, of mineral acids. So if we take uh, either P4O6 or indeed P4O10 and we add water to them, we hydrolyze them, the process of adding water is just a hydrolysis reaction, then what you get are acids. So if you take P4O6 and you react that with six equivalents of water, then you get four phosphoruses, four equivalents of something called phosphorus acid. Now note that is phosphorus acid. It is not phosphoric acid. We'll come to phosphoric acid in a moment. Phosphorus acid is the species that you get if you hydrolyze P4O6. Phosphoric acid is the species that you get if you hydrolyze P4O10. And the structure of acid is not POH3, as you might have thought it would be. It's not as simple as that. It actually tautomerizes. This is the, known as the tautomer of POH3. Now, how many OH groups have we got? That's an important question, because by asking how many OH groups we've got, we decide how many ionizable protons there are. If it did have the structure of POH3, then potentially it would be what we call a tribasic acid. That simply refers to how many ionizable protons do we have. So in a molecule of phosphorus acid, we have one, two ionizable protons. This is not an ionizable proton. In fact, as we've seen, it's slightly negatively charged. This is not going to behave like a proton in this system. So phosphorus acid is a dibasic acid can be deprotonated not three times, but only twice. Let's contrast that with phosphoric acid, which is the one that you will have heard of. Phosphoric acid is what you get if you hydrolyze P4O10. And that has the formula of H3PO4 and the structure as given here. So here we have one phosphorus oxygen double bond, but here we have three OH groups bonded to the phosphorus. So this is a genuine tribasic acid. We can remove all three of these protons if we go to higher and higher um, values of pH, all three of those protons. Now because of this reaction, because of the fact that phosphorus pentoxide, P4O10, reacts very vigorously with water to make a very sticky, non-volatile phosphoric acid, it's actually very useful as a drying agent. So what you often find is that people, if they need to dry a gas supply, for example, will actually pass their gas through a fluidized bed 
of phosphorus pentoxide. And if there is any moisture in their gas, it will react with the phosphorus pentoxide and it will in so doing dry the gas. Try basic acid. The first pKa value is 2.12, so it's not a very strong, compare that to nitric acid. Nitric acid had a first pKa value, or only pKa value, of minus 1, because it's a logarithmic scale, three orders of magnitude less acidic than nitric acid. And of course, once you've removed one proton to generate an anion, removing subsequent protons from an anionic species becomes much more difficult. And as a rule of thumb, pKa values for po polybasic species increase by about five units for every proton that you want to remove. So if we look at this, this conforms very well to our rule of thumb. Two pKa of two for removal of the first proton, pKa of seven for removal of the second proton, and pKa of 12. So we need very basic conditions to remove the third proton.